my jitterbug. <laughs> okay. So I am Nick Crabtree here with Jared Phillips and David Adkins. Look at Dave. He's David. So, he's so excited to be here. He is a ball of sunshine. Anyway, this is my aunt. I know. And my cousin. Well, I knew that you told me. And we are here with Helen. Yeah. Okay. So we are doing an interview today discussing your personal experiences in Lucasville and some history, whatever you want to talk about, really. So um, we can start with um, how long have you lived in Lucasville? Like All my life, except for two years. When I was in, in the um, early 50s, I was gone two years, but other than that, all of it. I was raised out there on the um, Klein farm. That's where I grew up for 16 years. Okay. Um, what was that like growing up on a farm? I was uh, by myself. Mother didn't know where I was half of the time. I just roamed. Just had no responsibilities whatsoever. <laughs> and you said you had, a, did you have any brothers and sisters? No. no? Um... So, I had lots of uncles and aunts, grandpas. Um, could you tell me a little bit about some of them, maybe? Well, my grandfather was a fox hunter and had fox hounds. That was one of his, uh, they were very strong uh, Democrats. in the Civil War on the Confederate side in Kentucky. My mother was a teacher. She taught the one-room school and rode horseback to school, had a horse two miles, had uh, from first to eighth grade and then babies, maybe the Mom couldn't take care of them, and the kids would bring them to school, so she'd have eight or ten, maybe, sometimes twenty. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to talk about. How many aunts and uncles? My mother was one of twelve. The oldest one, when he was sixty, the baby was... Uh, 20 some, but there were 12 of them. Eight boys and four girls. Two of my uh, uncles served in the Army. Uh, one served in the Navy, and his uh, ship was shot down. Um, World War II was my heyday. All of the men teachers went away to war, and we had substitute teacher women that hadn't taught for years. In fact, it, I got to teach part of the time. Mm -hmm. Some of the seniors filled in if they didn't have anybody else. Um, during World War II, we uh, put on little plays, and the public came in and paid, and that money went for war bonds. Uh, we had somebody that taught us how to make bandages and in case we got attacked here, of course we didn't. Yeah. But, uh, everything was rationed. You couldn't get uh, all uh, gas or tires, sugar, coffee, meat. What else was rationed? Two pair of shoes a year was all you got. Nylons. 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 You, they were, you couldn't get them. Chewing gum. You couldn't get that unless your uncle was in the PX and <laughs> buy you a box of it. I was very popular then. <laughs> um, let me see. At Valley, it, originally it was just uh, one little core of uh, students, and then we got people from Glendale over, and 
and then we got people from Northwest, so we had a mix. Yeah, different people coming in all the time. But all the men teachers went to war, so the women, that's how to fill in. I had a pen pal, one of my teachers. I wrote back and forth with him. I probably got the letters here somewhere with everything else. Uh, I can't think of anything else to say about it. Um, let me think. Uh, did you have any other experiences that, like during high school? Like, did, did they have basketball and things like that? or The boys' basketball was the only sport that was intramural or whatever. Mm -hmm. Girls, we had a little basketball at the home school, but we didn't play any place else. That was it. Uh, basketball was all Valley had. They weren't big in anything else. Uh, I remember we had one boy cheerleader, Freddie Freop, <laughs> was a cheerleader. That was something new. Um, let me think. How many children do you have? I have four. I have three girls, and one. My youngest is a boy. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, seven, seven grandchildren and seven great grandchildren. Wow. She's my oldest. And we were telling him we graduated together from Ohio University. Oh. <laughs> In six. Seventy-one. Hmm. Uh, let me see. I've got two nurses, one school teacher, and one trucking entrepreneur. And then I've got uh, one of my son-in-laws is a doctor. One is a. Uh, it was a forester. Yeah, I saw you're at a sawmill. I don't know. Anyway, the hoi polloi when we all get together. And up until recently, we used to um, have family get togethers, and it was a hodgepodge. Noisy. Couldn't hear yourself think. I think that's why I'm hard of hearing. I burned my earplugs out. <laughs> so. So how are, you, how are you related to David? He's my nephew, right? Right. His mother and my husband were brother sister. Okay. And then dad and and his father and me were first cousins, so it was double, almost. Um. What year did you graduate? Forty-six. Um, were you like anything? Were you smart? At, were you good at school? Uh, were you smart? Were you good at school? I had a scholarship, but I was afraid to move away. You couldn't go. If we, we'd have had Shawnee and I could have gone there, I'd have probably got used it. But I wasn't going to live away from my home. So it just went to pot. So, what did you do for a living? I was a housewife until, a farm housewife, until I started back to school in 68, and I got my uh, associate degree in nursing, and then I got a Bachelor of Science in 71, and I was a nurse at Mercy Hospital for, I don't know how many years. Ended up as director of nursing there. I taught. I was school nurse for a short time. I wouldn't be a teacher for any love or money. <laughs> and it, where was it? Was Mercy Hospital? Was that in Portsmouth? Yeah. Okay. That was a good hospital. The nuns run it. Hmm. It was where the. 
not what is what do they call it best? It's not an ER, S, but an S, urgent, urgent care. care, SOMC urgent oh, care, right. and SOMC urgent care now. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That was a good hospital. Yes, it was. <laughs> so that's what they said when it went out, and they transferred the nurses over to the other hospital, the floors that got the. Mercy nurses were better than the others. I don't know. Prejudice. Well. Okay. Um, did did you like doing that all those years? Did you like nursing? Well, yeah. I didn't care much for the bedpan detail, but after I got into the uh, <laughs> business part of it, yeah, I liked it. Nursing has a big role in. Uh, I think when I was director, I had the biggest uh, number of uh, employees under my uh, thing. I had 700 and some. Oh my, that's a lot. She was one of them. Yeah. I promoted her. She, she did she nepotism. <laughs> well. I was accused of uh, yeah. nepotism. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure she earned it. I, I did. <laughs> I did. I was accused of nepotism. Well, that happens to everyone, I think. Well, I know. But anyway, let's see, what else could I talk about? Um, when you were a farm wife. At oh, farm life. It was a very active agricultural uh Thing when I grew up, we had a uh, farm bureau meeting in Dirty Dozen that met once a month and talked about issues and everything. Um, very active in the, the Grange. The fair was an agricultural fair then. It didn't. Uh, it's a motor now since Games got it. Scratch that out. <laughs> Y'all like it is. If it doesn't have a motor, it doesn't. I'm still mad about them tearing that old barn down up there at the fairground. I know what you mean. So, what kind of uh, like crops did you have? My husband farmed in the Soda River bottoms and corn and soybeans, and then he. Same thing out there. At one time we had a greenhouse and sold plants. And we had chickens. And I hated chickens. Thanks. I think that's why I've got a problem with my eyes. What do you it, think your what do you think Orville's greatest love on the farm was? Just work, work, work. That's not what I expected you to say. What did you expect? I expected you to say how well he liked the cows, because he always the seemed to... The dairy. He was, he the was dairy a dairy part. man, yeah. Uh, he liked the cows. We had dairies. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think he liked the mules before they got tractors. <laughs> they got away. <laughs> got loose and up on Marka. People call down there and want to come get those mules. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like what kind of things did they used to have at the fair before? Well, they had a lot of stuff in the Grange building and the flower show was big. I haven't been to the fair for years, so I don't know. I'm boycotting it, <laughs> making a statement. It was, and our dairy herd was uh, paced for the Saudi County Fair. You didn't have to milk during fair week because they were all ready to have calves and freshen, what you might say. So that week we didn't have to milk cows and we could go to the 3 o'clock.
o'clock in the afternoon and stay till midnight and didn't have to worry about it. But everybody went to Saudi County Fair. That was a big deal. Do you have any like overall memories of Lucasville? Like any funny stories or anything you can think of that you can tell? There's a lot of memories. I remember one instance my husband always talked about boom bang. Somebody hid some dynamite in their coal pile in the garage and set fire to it. And that family's still alive, so I won't mention their name. <laughs> and then somebody put a, uh, a buggy or something up on top of the old, where the high school used to be. Um, Across the, there on the corner, they tore it down. On the south side of Lucas, were you at the high school? Yeah. When I went to school, it was intermediate. Was I went to the first grade in that building. you got the 23 suites. I went to the first grade in that building, and then we went out there for the cemetery. Right. And then we went back down there at the sixth grade. But anyway, I think it was a buggy or something up on top of that building. We weren't, we were segregated, we weren't segregated. We had two families of blacks from uh, Houston Hollow. I can't remember one of their names. Was it Heard? Uh, Was it Heard? H U R D? And Hill. And Hill, Hill you're right. Yeah. But they were down at Uncle Harold's all the time. My husband's uncle lived there with the mountains by Houston Hollow. And I think that uh, Stuart Houston teacher. She was taught third grade or something from Houston Hall. They were named after. The one that was a Stewart? Huh? Her maiden name was Stewart? Yeah. She's still living. Yeah, I know. She's 60, uh, 95. 95. Yeah, 95 or 96. Yeah. She's at Heartland. Uh, uh, she's Heartland, okay. Yeah, I knew a few of those, uh, Faye Turner, I knew her. Now they went as far down as Crow Hollow, their students came. In terms of on the other side of the river? It's still like that. And then we had kids from Mount Joy, the Arnolds, and somebody from over there. They jumped on the It was a good time to grow up. My husband used to do wheelies in the schoolyard with uh, when Eugene and Roger and Johnny Day were little. They'd run out watching do wheelies out there. How did you meet your husband? Probably one of the uh, farm get-togethers when they did the uh, Weed threshing, the whole that wood area, every farmer would send a team and a wagon, and they'd come in. And he was probably one of them that came from the Schultz family. Do you remember who owned the threshing machine? Huh? Do you remember who owned the threshing machine? The Kenny. And they moved it from farm to farm? Yeah. To McKinney. harvest the grain? McKinney. And then we had a silo filling, and they all liked to eat at my grandmother's house cook. We had to feed them. Snedekers had horses, and everybody else had mules. But that's how I met him. And his sister, Ruth, your mother, right. that spent the day with me, usually. So we played with dolls. The Snedeker farm is where Randy Spriggs lives now, I think. Yeah, yeah. There was a Snedeker. I was looking 
do some old papers where the mill burned down. Farm Bureau burned down. I lose things. I find them and then I lose them. Or else somebody comes in and takes them from them. I think I've got a hold of Christ. <laughs> I'm sure he's here. <laughs> if you believe in that kind of stuff. Do you? Mm, I do. Believe in ghosts. I've got a ghost here. Yeah, he's yeah. right there. <laughs> I know there's one over there. How do you know? Huh? How do you know? Well, you sort of Feel get a glimpse. It's not enough to see a face, but they're there. Like a admiration, like a yeah, like a shadow maybe. And I'm not the only one that sees it either. <clears throat> That's Some people don't believe in ghosts. Well, I think I think they're real. <laughs> so, but they're here. <laughs> like, what kind of businesses used to be in Lucasville? What kind of businesses used to be like in Lucasville? I still what? businesses. What business was in Lucasville? What? Oh, we had uh, five restaurants. White building. The games had the big sign on. That was the Green Lantern, and they had slot machines down there. We were allowed to have lunch up there at school, but uh, you didn't play the slot machine. That was during World War II. There were five that come back in up there where Wendy's is. There was a little banner that Giovanni's is there. Schools didn't furnish lunch. You had to either take your lunch or buy it uptown. You had an hour's lunch. Um, then uh, there were two or three more down through there. And there were gas stations everywhere. It was an up-and-coming little village, but nothing now. Everything was torn down. I was surprised that that back street, some of those big houses are gone. And I had a bicycle. That was my mode of transportation. I could ride to Lucasville. I could ride out to his house there on the Cook Road. That's a lot of biking. Minford. That's a lot of riding. A lot of riding. Did you ride to Minford, you told? You rode to Minford? Yeah, I went to Minford. Made the loop. Went over to almost the Otway one time. We didn't have phones. I'm sure Mother didn't know where I was. <laughs> when, I was just on, the, on my own. When did you get your first car? We bought a car and... Um, Fifty-one. There where the post office is now was a car dealership, and we bought a car there. Von Murley had a car dealership. There was a roller rink over there somewhere. In Lucasville. Yeah. Across from where your mom lives. Across lived. from the Moulton House, there on that block. Oh, okay. Moulton's were a prominent family at that time. They had, uh, Kentler's had a um, restaurant, which was sort of a dive. We weren't allowed to walk on that side of the street. We had to stay on this side of the street. <laughs> you might get <laughs> assaulted by a, a, a drunk. Hmm. They had all kinds of... Uh, Things had a, what do you call them, when the sheriff, a deputy in Lucasville that was on the ball, he really was, I mean, he was out arresting everybody. A constable? Constable, yeah. 
Who was the constable? I can't remember, but Orville used to give him fits. <laughs> they... Somebody else said his name was Conley, but I couldn't remember his name either. I can't remember what his name was. Anyway, they hauled him before the uh, magistrate, which was Mr. McManus. And he charged you so much, pocketed the money probably. But it was uh, a, a dry community. You couldn't buy any liquor there. So. Where did they go to get liquor if they wanted? On the Jitney Pass. We had a bus from Lucasville. were in Portsmouth. Hmm. What kind of things were there to do in Portsmouth? We had uh, five uh, theaters at one time. You could see a movie five days a week. There were three in Portsmouth, two, two down on the west, on uh, Bodie Fiddle, three uptown, and one up at uh, New Austin. There were five. We had two shoe factories. It was a booming town. There were two shoe factories. Steel mill. Huh? The steel mill. The steel mill. New Boston had more money than they knew what to do with. Then, the steel mill. They had the... Uh, it got a bad name because they had that telephone strike for several months. And then the steel mill was on strike. It was written up in national news. Somebody got shot at the steel mill from up on the hill. Why were they on strike? Why were they were on strike. Why were they on, why did they strike? They didn't do anything, I don't know. Why do they strike nowadays? <laughs> Somebody gets upset and... I don't, I'm sort of ashamed of the American people anymore. Why is I don't that? Think we, I don't think we could uh, do like we did during World War II. No, I don't think we, don't think we could do I don't either. think you all would be willing to give up all these things. I don't know that they, we would either. I agree with you 100%. Because it was just, you, you did it, you did without. What kinds of things did you do as a teenager for entertainment <laughs> on the farm? Rode my bike, went to the movies one night a week at the community hall. Uh, we had skating parties, believe it or not, on the gyms. Floor. Mm -hmm. Would they let you on there with the rollerblades? Uh, not today. <laughs> they had a skating party, and you had class plays. So you went to those. I don't know. Anything in the winter? Right swim after work, huh? Anything in the winter? In the winter. Well, they used to skate on uh, the pond out there that's dry now. There, where you go. Along the old Lucas Hill Memphis yeah. Road, Robert Lucas Road now? Yeah. Yeah. What about that hillside in the winter, did they? Oh, they, uh, I think it wasn't your dad, it was Uncle Ward that broke his ankle. So they ride down off of that hill. The haystack? What did they use for sleds? Did they have sleds? Or? It was a handmade thing. But it was, uh, your dad was involved in it. But that was a nice place to, if you didn't run into the pond, you were all right. And then where the school is now, this Mr. Morgan had a uh, truck farm. He grows vegetables and hauls the town. He had 
the deaf uh, son that went to the school for the deaf. He would bring his friend down, and we went up on the haystack and up at the top. They got hold of me, taking me down. <laughs> me yelling bloody murder. They couldn't hear me stop. <laughs> We took pictures, which I've got boxes of pictures. You just made your own entertainment. That little creek that feeds Lake Margaret had a big, pretty deep little place. We went swimming in that. That was where you swim until they built Lake Margaret. That was during the 50s. Did you also go up to the Sand Rocks? We went to Sand Rocks all the time. Have you been up there recently? Not recently. <laughs> I've got pictures. If you want some pictures. I'm, I'm talked out. I'm sorry. Well, you're fine. Uh, you're fine. Is there anybody famous in your family? I've got, uh, I graduated with Laurie Franks by Rachel Bumgarner. She was in my class. And I've got a, a famous cousin, cousin famous, Jesse Stewart. I think that's the only famous. Who else would I have? I was thinking of Jesse Stewart. Jesse, yeah. That's cousin famous. <laughs> he was an author, correct? Uh, yeah, he wrote 30, 40 some books. You've had something in his class, I'm sure. Maybe, I don't know. I don't pay attention that much. <laughs> <laughs> He's in every English book. Anyway, he, um, an old town where my mother was raised, they didn't have a high school. So when she graduated from eighth grade, in order to get her teacher's diploma, she had to go to Greenup and live with Jesse's uh, mom and dad in W. Hama. And she lived with, she'd go down on that little railroad on Sunday evening and spend the week at Aunt Martha's and Uncle Mitchell's. And then Friday night she'd go back home to, and got her degree so she could teach. But she, Do you know what year they moved over here? 1927. Do you have any special memories of the flood? I remember having people living with us for months. Uncle Parker's second wife lived with us. And Uncle Quantro. Yeah, that was a mess. Were, were they in Portsmouth and flooded out, or where they was their were, home? They lived in in Bonneville somewhere. Okay. Aunt Molly lived down there, but I think she went to somebody for some other place. Yeah, well, that was, that was, it wasn't in school, because they were using the uh, school for people to live in from Lucasville. You all don't remember Lucasville getting flooded out that much. Before they built the dams in the Sayota. About every third year, look at the floor of the bombings moved into the school. Do you remember that? Yeah. They got new furniture and cleaned it out. Rick Allwood and I used to laugh about uh, Lucasville getting cleaned out one or two or three years. What did they call the bottoms? The bottoms. Little Italy. We had an Italian family who lived there during World War II. I don't remember his name. But it was Little Italy or the bottoms or uh, another name. Well, the mother always said that Little Italy was 
because of it flooding, it would be like well, being in uh, what's I it, thought, Venice. I thought it was because we had that Italian to get there. I don't know. I was directing it to get there. But you made your own amusement. Up there where Eugene Game has his business now, that, that creek that comes down through there, we used to go up there and go swimming in one of those uh, places on the uh, Malone farm. We got this car now. The old days are not like, you know, I grew up during the good years. <laughs> the good years. You all are getting the bad part. Were there any other characters in Lucasville, people that had sort of <laughs> unusual... There were a lot of characters in Lucasville. Tell us about a few of those if you can remember. Well, I would, some of them are still alive. <laughs> I wouldn't want to name some of them. Huh? Okay. You had your town drunk that was roaming the street. Um, I don't know. That's okay. I just. That's... Is there anything you miss about Lucasville now? Uh, now? Mm -hmm. I just don't go up there. In fact, I don't go anywhere. Yeah, it used to be a beautiful town. I guess we got a famous person from Lucasville. Uh, what's his name? Mary the Molten. Branch Rippy. Right. You know who Branch Ricky is, okay. I knew you'd know who Sports was. He married a Moulton. One of the Moulton girls. We've got a cemetery out here. It was the last burial in it was um, in 65. 65, I think, no was before we moved down here. It's got a wall, a stone wall all the way around it, so you don't have a gate into it. Was it a small family cemetery or? It's the uh, McConnell. Uh, Thomas. Dorothy McConnell, Thomas. It's the Thomas Cemetery. Okay. Uh, that uh, McConnell house up there. Lucasville, that red brick house about Lucasville. If you go the new road. On Fairground Road, the old two story brick. That, this was a part of the uh, Harriet White inherited this part of the Thomas Street. And even McConnell inherited that, the 64 and that up there. So this, house, this was a part of that. I didn't know that. I didn't know this uh, was. I did not know this was part of the Thomas property. Yeah, that's I knew the, the piece Cemetery. next door was. Huh? I knew the next piece north was. Yeah. But yeah, Jack owned that. We bought that from. Um, anyway, Harriet inherited this part though, because she was telling me how they, when they built that place over there. Had to move it when they expanded the road. Twenty-three. Yeah, but this house used to sit much closer. It was in the, the twenty-three, and lane. it was. It was in the southbound lane. Right, and the whole house was moved yeah. to where it is now. And right. when they dug the basement, they didn't get it to fit, so part of the basement didn't <laughs> plumb. <laughs> So, yeah, that was in, uh, I don't know, Simon Bitter was living there when he was born. Yeah. You knew that. The, I knew the Benners lived here. Yeah. So, I don't know. And I presume they farmed the ground for the whites, tenant farmers? I don't think they farmed. I don't know who farmed this. Okay. Orville probably did, but I, I didn't ask a lot of questions. When it's too late, you think about things like that. 
You were telling me about the Civil War houses. The Civil War houses that were up yeah. and down. The yeah, that one at the Mount of Houston hollowed with one of them. This one down here under the overpass is another one. I don't know. Anyway, there was a, a trolley, one of those streetcar trolleys, mm -hmm. trolley diner there where the florist shop is in Lucasville. That was one of the places you could go for lunch. Okay. It went to the diner for lunch. And the Green Lantern and Giovanni's is still there. And uh, that little across from Kroger's. Wasn't uh, there one called the Comeback Inn? Oh, yeah, Aunt Jenny worked there. Uh, one of them was Beulah. Tommy and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, she was a Logan. Beulah huh. Logan ran. And Jenny worked there as a waitress before she went to. I had an aunt that was in the waves during World War II. Was she the youngest? No. Ward was younger than her. Okay. And I found a clipping the other day. Uncle Jim was, uh, his uh, ship was shot down in the Solomons. I didn't remember where that was. I knew that it was, the ship had gone down. I didn't know where. Well, it was the Solomon Island. As many times as he told the story, I should remember. But he was uh, two decks below when he hit. He climbed over those iron railings. Well, he was He was a Lucasville character. <laughs> Very smart, but you wouldn't know it. I don't know if his, his, his kids are, I don't know where George is. He's still in London. As far as I know, he's. And JD's still in Alamogordo, I think. He can't, he can't get, uh, out of the service because he knows too much about the, the eggplants and all that, according to Jim, I don't know. Janice lives on Coles Boulevard. <laughs> really? I think. Oh. I don't know what Janice does. She, she did tore, work at the hospital. She tore the house heard. down up there during the... No, nothing left of their house. I wonder if he planted those walnut trees he was going to. He was going to plant walnut trees on the farm. I don't know. I don't know. Well, there yeah, ain't... I got a lot of memories and a lot of them are all mixed up. On that happens to all of us. Get worse. Enjoy it while you can. I was still raising tomato plants and canning tomatoes and everything, and suddenly here I am. The only thing I can do now is cook a little bit and talk. I've always been able to talk. Well, you were a good cook, too. <laughs> so, the only thing is, I threw my teeth away. I've got some more coming, so I'll be able to talk better. Well, I wrapped them in a napkin at the restaurant, uh -huh. and I forgot what I'd done, and I threw everything back in my honey out. Well, people do that all the time. Somebody, you know, that's making me some more sense that happens all the time. I thought, that's that much money, surely not everybody. People do that at school sometimes with, you know, retainers, like after they get their braces off, they wear this clear yeah. retainer. At the hospital, we always had somebody leave their teeth on the tray. Mm -hmm. It's like that book I read that the, the uh, student nurse was supposed to clean the dentures of the ward. She had a pen, she put everybody in there, and then she didn't know who they were. <laughs> oh, well. I've talked out. You haven't said anything. Um. 
silent, you're in the silent majority. He is. Oh, well. Well, do you have anything else you want to add? Can you think no. of anything? Oh, I could go on and on and on. That's what we do on Sunday morning. I cook breakfast and everybody sits and we talk about things. Anything else? I found an Indian head penny. Have you got any of those? Mm -hmm. I've got a few. I almost threw that at clippings of my hair when I was a baby. There was an Indian head penny in that envelope. Wheat pennies. Wheat pennies. Or I've got pennies. I think we ought to do away with pennies. <laughs> well, we thank you, Helen, for being well, willing I to. I was dreading this. So it wasn't that bad, was it? Nah. I think you ought to go into broadcasting, though. But learn how to spell, because I'm getting mad about the way they spell things. So Nick wants to do what you did. Huh? Nick wants to do what you did. Oh. Nick wants to be a nurse. You don't have to do bedpan. Nowadays, nursing, <laughs> and that's what I tell you, you can, if you get a degree, you can work as a drug rep, make Boku money. No bedpans. <laughs> or you can be a, a CEO, like some of these characters down here make money. And Something I'm not to do. And it's not nursing anyway, it's just paperwork. I'm not sure what Jared wants to do. Computer engineering. What do you okay. want to do? He's computer engineering. I quit the hospital before the computers came in. They were just getting ready to go to computers, and I resigned. I was so I don't know anything about computers whatsoever. <laughs> I've got a jitterbug, and I can't work it half the time. <laughs> just a little. I can get the time, and Betsy can call me, and I can hear on that. <laughs> That's the only thing I've got. Everybody else has all these. And then it's going to get me a... Uh, iPad. iPad. Good luck. <laughs> Again, Helen, we thank you for allowing us to come and yeah, interview nice you today. You all, but I'm sorry I didn't graduate with one of your relatives. One of David's friends comes in with... Uh, the relative of the Andronus, so I get some scoop on them once in a while. Can't remember who he is. Did you know my great grandpa, Cliff, my great grandpa, uh, Cliff uh, Crabtree, um, he was, uh, he's Carl Crabtree's older brother, do you remember? Um, Don. Don's dad. Yeah. I remember him. You don't remember Don's father? What was his name? Clifford? Cliff? No. There's too many crab trees. I can't keep them straight. David was talking about Schultz's. There's eight of us now. There's only eight Schultz's. Yeah. They're dwindling down. They said Grandpa Schultz used to stand out on the porch and when that the last train went up at night, he'd swing the lantern and he died. And the night that he died, somebody got out and swung the lantern, showed the wreath on the door, and they didn't toot. They always tooted all the way up. Some of those little traditions. Let them talk. I won't say a word. <laughs> I couldn't be quit. I couldn't be 
quiet. Well, too much Johnson. That's right. They're all talking. They all talk at the same time, and they just get louder and louder. They make themselves hear. <laughs> just so when they go home, I'll...